Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to be discussing this image that I captured in my last video where I went and took a chance on the weather and if you haven't seen that video already then I'll put a link up top and in the description below so you can go and check it out before you watch this. It's the summertime and this week it is super hot. I think that I'm going to need to go and get some refreshment down at the coast sometime soon or have a dip in the sea, that's what I'm looking forward to. But right now I'm confined to working in the the uh, the fields that are close to me and that's the location that, uh, that this image was captured. Just about a mile up the road uh, from me here uh, is there's lots of farmland and this is just one of many fields. And I was just having a walk uh, through there uh, a few days ago and uh, and I saw this tree from a way off. It was just a tree in the middle of the field on its own. I don't know why farmers keep them there um, because you would think that it would actually have a, a great impact on the crops that they grow and maybe they have to, perhaps somebody knows, you can tell me in the comments. But because it was there on its own, it did just stuck out and I walked around the edge of the field to get a bit of a closer look and I thought, yeah, this, this could make a, a, a subject for an image. And so I made the plan for a couple of days later that I would be able to go out in the evening and, and try and capture, capture it towards sunset. And that's what I did. However, on the day, uh, the weather uh, had been pretty cloudy all day. And the forecast did say that it was going to break up and that we were going to get some nice sun by the end of the day. But it got to about seven o'clock and that hadn't really happened. But I thought, this is, this is the time that I planned, this is the opportunity that I've got to take. Whether I get an image or not, I just have to go and have a look because there's a chance that if it does break up, there'll be lots of clouds that are still scattered and the light will hit them from underneath and it'll glow orange or pink or purple or whatever. So I thought to myself, if I didn't go out, I'd be sitting at home, probably look out the window and see the sky light up and think, I wish I'd gone out. And that became the subject of that video because that is how, how I tend to feel. You know, if you do make that decision to not go out and you see that the conditions would have been perfect, you can say to yourself, oh, I wish I'd gone out. It might not bother you too much, but you still regret the decision to stay home rather than go out. And one of the points that I've now made in a lot of the comments that appeared on that video is that I have never regretted making a decision to do something. So that's not just with going out and taking photographs, but everything that I've done through life. If I've made a decision to do something against not doing it, being the, uh, being the, uh, the opposition to that, I've, I've never regretted it. But what I have regretted is when I've made the decision not to. And as I said, this applies to photography and absolutely everything that I've done in my life. So since making that video, it's become a lot more profound to me. And that message or that feeling that I have is something that has always been driving me. So whenever I feel that I should do something or that I want to do something, but I decide not to, I force myself to, to rethink, to, to look over it again to look at what's the worst that can happen. So in the next week or, or so, it's the deadline for Landscape Photographer of the Year. It's a competition in the UK, if you're not aware, where uh, they produce a book each year of the, uh, the most commended and the winning winners of the categories that they have. It's a pretty prestigious competition. Now, in previous years, I've looked at that competition and I've thought, I don't think I really have anything good enough. I don't think that any of my images are going to win and so I decide not to. But then if I don't enter any images, I've got absolutely no chance of winning a competition. Now, what's winning a competition? Well, there's a, there's a prize fund, uh, there's, there's some money for the winners of the categories and a higher prize for the overall winner, of course, but it's not life-changing amounts of money. I guess winning a competition is something that we see as a validation. So yes, if we get lots of likes on an image on social media, that means that the overall public like what you produce. But 
if people who have a lot of experience and also uh, are, are very advanced in their own fields of photography commend your work then you can see how far you've come from the day that you started you you are being recognized by peers and people that exceed that level and that is something that feels really great when it comes to to your work so okay what are the chances of winning a competition like that very very low so many people enter this competition and the judges would get seconds to view an image and the images that they that they rate need to have a real impact to catch their eye to make them look twice now that means you can start to think strategically and just select the images that you like but there's all sorts of reasons why it doesn't really matter what you enter i think the the point being is that enter the work that you're most proud of and then you are in for a chance of being noticed you don't know what people like, you don't know what kind of style that an individual likes. So therefore, it's very difficult to try and second guess what it is that they want. Where am I getting to with all this? Essentially, it's the same message that I had in the video. If you don't do something, if you don't take that decision to do something, you're not going to gain from it at all. You'll only lose. So if you want to enter this competition, and I'm going to enter it, believe me, but uh, I have entered it in previous years too, but never ever been recognized. The only recognition I've got is a confirmation email that I have not been successful. Either way, if you don't enter this competition, if you don't have your images in the running, there is absolutely no chance you're going to win. If you do enter them, then there is a chance. There's a chance that you're going to win that contest. You will get recognition and you might even get your image displayed in Waterloo Station. Whatever it is that is the, the overall goal or the overall success, you only get a chance at that if you go for it. I know I've been rambling a lot about that and I hope that it all makes sense. As yet, I haven't yet discussed the image that I photographed, so let's have a look at that now. So here it is. In the video, you probably saw that at the time I was flip-flopping between whether I liked the image or not. I'm still kind of there. Personally, I think it's an okay image, and I don't think there's anything wrong with it uh, from an outside perspective. In fact, it looks quite nice. I mentioned the leading line taking your eye away. I actually don't think it does. I think it does draw your eye in towards the tree because the tree simply grabs you because it's there uh, highlighted on the on the on the horizon um, and you can't miss it. So this line takes you right up there. I like the detail down in the wheat below and the the shadow and the light there wasn't too much like natural sunlight coming through so it was all quite flattish light getting later in the day but it meant that the shadows were a bit deeper and darker as it went down into the into the field and and uh, and I'm pleased with how it's come out there in the photograph I also am glad that you can see the ladder here up against the tree. You might not have been able to see it on the final display of the image in the video, but it is there. And for me, that's quite an important part of the story that's being told in this image, because what is that ladder? Where's it taking you? Is there a tree house up there? It's none of those things. But the fact that there is a ladder there, it means that there's been human interaction with this tree. It's in the middle of the field. It's quite mysterious and it does get you asking those questions. As for the light, yeah, my initial thought about it, and maybe why I feel slightly disappointed, is that I was hoping there was going to be a much bigger break in the clouds and that the clouds might be slightly higher and therefore the light would be a bit better, maybe slightly glowing. You might actually see kind of the, uh, the sun setting a bit more. And that was my initial thought of how this might turn out. And I might even get some golden light hitting the top of the green wheat here. But um, it wasn't like that. So that's why I felt disappointed with it. But I think in terms of uh, the few images that I took, this was definitely the best. And this is the one that I displayed because it has this kind of corona of cr clouds that, that go around the tree. And, uh, and there is a very subtle pinkish bluish tones that are in the clouds there the, 
that do give it that little bit of interest. I'm not really one for really dark and moody clouds. Sometimes it feels like that when an image has been processed in such a way, it makes the sky a lot darker than the, the ground and then that gives it that slightly unnatural HDR almost look and I'm not the biggest fan of that. And so um, the fact that I was able to give it a bit of a subtle treatment in terms of the colors and the clouds, uh, uh, just, yeah, I made the most of what the conditions were like. And it's important to do that. It's important to make the most of the conditions. Otherwise you do walk away with nothing. You might feel disappointed or frustrated. So just to finish up this video there, uh, there was a video I posted a few weeks ago where I mentioned or was reflecting on the details of what's happened on my journey over the last 12 months, my last 12 months on YouTube and my last 12 months of deciding to make a change in my life. Now, I thank everybody for the concern that you had in some of the comments there. Um, it's important to, for me to note that my intention was not to make the video come across as something where I'd felt beaten down. On the contrary, I am, everything that's happened over the last 12 months has, has really lifted me up. If you'd known how things were for me or how I was before I started this journey and how I am now, not necessarily on camera all the time, but just in terms of my general day-to-day -day living, there's been such an improvement in my overall quality and happiness. And it is all down to the decision that I made which brings me back to what uh, the point I was making earlier. It's about the fact that I make a decision and I don't regret doing it. I really don't regret making this decision of changing my life and working towards becoming a professional photographer because it has opened up so many more doors that I did not expect it to. It's given me a lifestyle which I'm much more happy with in terms of the flexibility and the things that I can do and what I can work on. I'm not the most emotional, I, yeah, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't sing from the rooftops, I'm not that kind of person, I'm a lot more quiet and reserved, you might have noticed that from my videos. So if, it's, if joy isn't exuding from me, it does not mean that I'm not feeling happy in myself, if that makes sense. And I hope that, uh, that in seeing that video people weren't really thinking that something was going wrong for me. As I said, on the contrary, I feel like as time goes on, things are getting more and more right. I've now got something really important that I want to work towards and I've got a much better idea of how I'm going to get there than I did when I started this. The reflections I were making were generally of like, I didn't know what was success and I didn't expect what was going to happen. and there is a very important fact that I do need to be making a bit more money from what I do here simply because uh, it's getting harder and harder to sustain running this channel and doing voluntary work mainly because I just need that income just like everybody else I need to pay the bills and my final comments in that video were that I just need to concentrate more on the commercials of uh, this part of my business my YouTube channel and my uh, my mission to help people see the well-being and mental health benefits of photography and also the commercial side of my other photography business. And they are two businesses that I do consider businesses and that I am running and I just need to look at how I can develop those businesses. If you look at the, uh, the, the chart that I had in my very first video, I call it a chart, it's a drawing. If you look at that drawing in my very first video, there is a part where I'm talking about grow business. Now that was something that I was aware of from day one. I'm looking at now on day 370 or 380 something. And so I'm still not quite at the top of that scale that I've drawn. And I'm fine with that. I just know that that is something that I've got to work on. I hope that explains everything. The one thing that I have to add to that is that maybe it was because I made a, a, a choice in the music that didn't quite suit the overall mood or the feeling of the, what the video should have been. And that, I guess, had a, had a quite a big impact. 
but that does demonstrate what an important influence music is in terms of these videos and what impact it has on the viewer and and how the video is presented. I bet if I was to actually overlay a different track to that video it wouldn't have got the reaction that it did but as I said it has got me to think a bit more about the importance of being happy with the choices that you make. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.